Well, good Thursday morning, friends and family, <clears throat> as we come to you again with some more thoughts for you to think about as you go through your day. Over the next several days, I want to look at the longest chapter in Scripture, and that is the 119th Psalm. We'll be looking at different aspects of that Psalm each and every day. But today I want to start with Psalm 119 and look at verse 18, where the psalmist says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. As you've gone through your day and you sit down in the evening to relax, have you ever thought about how much you see in a day that you ignore? You know, your mind subconsciously filters what we see each day to avoid that visual overload. But some fil folks filter out so much and they fail to see that which is important. We might call them unobservant. The older folks used to say people walk around with blinders on. And now this can become a very serious problem, especially when we fail to see some of the important things. Jesus himself spoke of this in Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 14. Notice what the words of the scripture say in that passage. Matthew 13, beginning in verse 14. It says, And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and you shall not understand. And seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people has grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their heart, and turn, so I should be, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. Compare those words to what the psalmist says in this 18th verse of the 119th psalm. The psalmist declaring, to open his eyes. Jesus says people have closed their eyes. So just the opposite is going on. But if you look closely at the 119th Psalm, verse 18, first of all, let me share with you Psalm 119, some facts about it itself. It is the longest Psalm, 176 verses in the English scriptures. It is an acrostic based on the Hebrew alphabet. Each section relates something to the Hebrew alphabet. And every verse Every verse, and I find this fascinating, every single verse mentions God's word in one way or another. It may speak about the law or about the commands or about the precepts or, or all those different things that refer to the scriptures, to the law that Jesus or that God has given those folks in the Old Testament. But look very closely at the plea, open my eyes. What is it that caused the writer to pin such a tribute to God? Had he been ignoring things that are around him? Had something come up in his life and turned to, where he turned to the Word, and after not reading the Word for a while, he rediscovered the wonders of God's Word? But then the second part of that verse says, that I may see the wondrous things from your law. Well, what would these wondrous things be? That's the question we must answer. You see, I believe what he is referring to is he's referring to the Old Testament. The law through the book of Samuel, maybe Psalms, maybe Job. He marveled at all these different things, just a few of the things. I believe when he says, show me the wondrous things, he's speaking of the story of creation that reminded him of his origin, where he came from, and his relationship to God, and the fact that he was man was created in the very image of God. Or perhaps he's referring to the story of Noah, and that reminded him of God's judgment, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's love. Or perhaps the story of Abraham and the Israelite nation, maybe that reminded him of his part in God's history on the earth. Or maybe it is the signs and the wonders that reminded him of the nature of God, Yahweh, the Elohim, El Shaddai, all the different names that God has given in Scripture. Perhaps those are the wondrous things he's referring to. Or could it be the story of the Exodus that reminded him of the faithfulness of God and how God provides salvation for his people? You see, the law reminded him of his need to live a life that was dedicated to God, that was shown his dedication to the word of the Lord. 
And notice, I believe also, as he speaks of this wondrous thing, he may be dealing about how God deals with people. So the question for us today is, do you and I need to make a similar plea to God today? I believe it is very easy for us to get involved in living. We live life and then we begin to take certain things for granted. This COVID-19 crisis has caused us to see that there are things that we have taken for granted as we go through our days. You see, we can do it with things of this world. We can do it with people. We can do it with life. We can do it with our blessings. Oftentimes, we forget how God has blessed us. Oftentimes, we forget to tell those that we love that we love them. You see, we can do go on and on about the things of our life that we overlook, that we take for granted. You see, but the sad part is, and in reality, we can do that with spiritual things as well. When I look at Scripture, I hope every time I open God's Word and I look at a passage, I pray that I learn something. Maybe it's something new. Maybe it's that I see something that I've never seen before. You see, we're never too old to continue to grow and continue to learn. But you and I, we need to open our eyes to see the wondrous things of God because the wonders of God are greater for us today. You see, we have recorded for us the story of the coming of God in the flesh all the way back in the book of John in chapter 1 in those first few verses of that chapter, John chapter 1 beginning in verse 1, Go back where it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. We have this fabulous passage of Scripture that says God's Son came in the flesh. And then we have recorded for us in the records of the gospel accounts, we have the record of the life of that word that came. We have the life of his teaching, of his compassion, of the miracles that he performed on all different types of individuals. We have the parables in which he teaches us life's lessons through the, the heavenly lessons through the physical things of this earth. You see... And then as we come to the close of that life, we have the cruel, tragic story of Calvary. We have recorded for us the trial that Jesus endured. We have the disrespect and the blasphemy that Jesus had to deal with. We have it recorded for us, his last words as he hung on the cross of Calvary. We have all of these things about Jesus, what he did for mankind, and specifically what he did for us. I pray that the Lord will open our eyes so that we can see the wondrous things that he has done for us. But you know, the story of Jesus does not end at the cross. You see, there is the resurrection. We know that early on the first day of the week, that Jesus came forth from that grave. We know that the ones that loved him were going out to take care of the body, to go out and to dress the body properly for burial. And when the ladies got there, the question of the angels asked, why are you seeking the living with the dead? You see, we have the story of that resurrection. And then we have the story of Jesus ascending back into heaven in Acts chapter 1. And then in Acts chapter 2, we began to see the wondrous things of how the church grew explosively. How it started from 12 or 30, how many ever it was that were in the upper room, to on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were added to the church. And then just a couple of chapters later, we read that there are 5,000 more. How that the gospel spread all throughout the world, we have a wonderful record, and that is a definitely a wondrous thing. And then there is, as we close the scripture in the book of Revelation, we have the wonder of this apocalyptic battle that is going on wherein the Lamb of God and his allies defeat Satan. We know that Jesus, 
when he rose from the dead, he took away the most powerful tool that Satan had, and that is death. Because Jesus gave us the opportunity to have life. You see, the final reality, the final wonder that we have is that of salvation. And how that it has been revealed throughout Scripture. What a wonder that me, a sinner, that God loved me and that Christ died for me. What a wonder it is by obeying the simplistic gospel of Jesus Christ that my sins are forgiven. And what a wonder it is that there is a place called heaven reserved for me. So our challenge today is that we not go through life with blinders on as it was said at one time because when we do, we will miss too much. We should pray to God just as the psalmist did here. We must pray for the Lord to open our eyes that we may see the wondrous things from His, from His law. I'm thankful that God has given me the ability to see things. I'm glad He's given me the ability to remember things. I'm glad, most of all, that he sent his son to die for me and that he died for the sins of all mankind. May God bless you today as you go through your day. Tomorrow we'll look at another section of the 119th Psalm and we'll do that for the next several days. Have Again, have a blessed day.